Hey there, welcome back to Lima Bean Living. In today's video, I thought I would bring you along as I make a variety of fall recipes and a fun DIY sensory bin. So let's get into this. So we are starting off by making some pumpkin bread that I have shared a number of times on my channel. In this video, I am using pumpkin that was like cooked and scraped and collected, you know, from an actual pumpkin sitting on my counter. But this recipe can also be used with canned pumpkin. And from my experience working with canned pumpkin, I recently made another batch. The canned pumpkin actually gives a little bit more orange color to the bread. And I kind of like working with it better. It's less liquidy. So you know, both both versions are delicious. I think in the future, I'm just gonna go with canned pumpkin because it makes it a little bit easier. You don't have to bake the pumpkin and scrape it down and all of that stuff. So much less steps. And then on this day, I thought I would try something new by making like a cinnamon sugar topping to the bread. And because this bread was so liquidy, because I was using like a pumpkin that I had baked, the crumbs kind of like sunk into the mixture and it wasn't as much of a garnish as I thought it would be after the muffins like had baked and cooled. But again, still delicious. You're adding sugar on top of, you know, bread. So you can't really go wrong with that. I will go ahead and put the recipe video, I'll link it up above for your guys' convenience if you wanna try this out. It is super yummy, uh, just a, like a staple in our house, especially in the fall. So in this video, one of the things I actually wanted to add was also like a little house tour of my fall decorations, but honestly, I really haven't added much since one of my last videos where I took down Halloween decorations and put up a couple fall decorations. So I am not including that here, and I just hope that normalizes that you don't always need to go all out or have a bajillion decorations for fall. I obviously just was a little too busy and didn't get around to doing more that I had planned, but that's okay. It hopefully won't be my last fall and it's, you know, gives me room for growth and improvement in future years. Next, we're making some chicken pot pie, like crock pot version, and I was defrosting some chicken. We're not using all of it here. We're gonna use a bag of veggies, some cream of chicken condensed soup. I have chicken broth here, but I had like frozen chicken stock that you guys will see me use some sour cream, some biscuits and seasoning. So I'm just putting in one of those like little cubes of my chicken stock because I needed to use that before I opened up something new. And then I'm tenderizing and seasoning my chicken before throwing that in the crock pot as well. Once the chicken is in there, we're gonna add in our two cans of soup, as well as our bag of frozen veggies. You go ahead and give that just like a nice little mix and let it cook. About halfway through, I came back and just kind of flipped the chicken, mixed up the mixture again because I honestly don't work with crock pots that often and I didn't know how this would turn out if I just like left the chicken on the bottom of the crock pot. So I wanted to give it a good mix and I thought I would put my heat thermometer in there to let me know when the chicken is done because I don't know about you, but my crock pot is so finicky and so like it's hard for me to use because there's times where I put it on low and expect my meal to be done in eight hours and it's done in three. And so I really can't trust my crock pot like at all. So anyways, that's why I used a little thermometer so that I knew when my chicken was totally cooked. When it was cooked, I took it out and instead of shredding it, I cubed it, threw it back in the mixture and then added in some sour cream and you have like the inside of a chicken pot pie. It is so delicious. I loved how this tasted. 
But before we're going to eat that, we're actually going to make some jumbo biscuits, just following the instructions on the tube. And when these are done baking and getting that nice golden brown, I cut mine in half and then we're going to top it with our chicken pot pie mixture. Now, I thought this was delicious. I can definitely see making this again. Juan was not a fan of the veggies, but he did think that the chicken part was good. Moving on, we're gonna be making some caramel apples. I have been wanting to do this for a really long time, so I figured, you know, why not come up with an excuse to do this and make it for our fall-themed video? And I can't say my family was, you know, complaining that I did this either. Anyways, I got these little caramel bites from, I think it was Walmart. Uh, I've had them for a while. They've been like in my pantry waiting for me to use them. But you just add like two tablespoons of water and microwave it for two minutes. And then, you know, just keep stirring it and stirring it and stirring it until it comes together and like everything is nice and melted. So as you guys saw earlier, I kind of like stabbed my apples first before inserting this kind of like large popsicle stick. I just got it from a pack from Dollar Tree. And then I'm dipping it in the caramel, kind of swirling it around, wiping off like the excess on the bottom. And really this would have been the time to put the sprinkles on that I had, you know, bought and had ready for these caramel apples. And by the time that I was like, okay, let's put sprinkles on, the caramel was already pretty firm. But Aubrey did come and she added a couple ghosts on hers. When I was filming this, this was around Halloween time. So she was like, you know, excited for the ghosts. But honestly, I prefer caramel apples with nothing on them, like but caramel or just caramel and chocolate. We ate one of the apples like the same day and put the rest in the fridge. And I have to say that after a day in the fridge, I honestly think they tasted even better. So the next time I plan on making these, I will be making them at least a day in advance so that we can have that like perfect texture. Now we're moving on to our little craft for this video. We're making a little DIY sensory bin. I had so many pinto beans like just in my pantry and I was like there's no way I'm using all of these like for food for a meal. So I figured we'd go ahead and try dyeing them and a technique that I've seen people do is you put some paint, some acrylic paint, and some hand sanitizer in with your beans in a bag, shake it up, lay them out to dry, and I was really really hopeful that this would kind of create a fall color bean. But as you guys will see, after these dry overnight, you can't really tell that they're yellowish orange. They look just kind of normal, like they're like their original color with a little bit of like a hint of yellow on top. So I was a little disappointed about that and I ended up throwing like half of the beans back in for another coating of paint and I, after even a second coating you really can't tell too much of a difference.
There is one, I guess, kind of benefit to having these beans coated in paint is that they kind of stick together, which makes it a different sensory experience than if you just play with dry beans that have nothing like else on top of them. The stickiness of it makes it like a, a fun thing to play with. So I can see, you know, having just beans be a sensory item in the future for a different sensory bin, but then having these with the paint on them, it does give it a different experience. But anyways, here are all the supplies or items that I purchased. Uh, pretty much everything's from Dollar Tree here. The only thing that's not from Dollar Tree is the Play-Doh that I made and the recipe I shared in my Halloween video where I make a Halloween sensory bin. But I picked up even this cute little basket from the Dollar Tree that I thought would be fun to like put a bunch of these little pumpkins in. These cookie cutters I thought were cute and it took me a while to realize this last one was a squirrel. But you know, after knowing it's a squirrel, I can definitely see that it's a squirrel, but it took me a while to actually see that. And then I am using my go-to sensory bin to put all of these items in. I never actually store my sensory items in this white bin. I have separate storage containers containers for each of my items that I would use in a sensory bin but I love this one because the edge or like the height of the bin isn't too tall so you don't have to worry about the kids like arching over this bin or hurting their back like it's not overly tall but there's enough of a lip on it where you can have something messy like beans or sand or you know liquid even to play with and it's a substantial amount. And like most of the sensory bins I make, I kind of overstuff it, but the nice thing about this bin is it has a lid with also another tiny little lip. So it makes it good for like another surface that the kids can play on. And in this case, I'm putting my Play-Doh, sticking some flowers in there, and just having that be like the Play-Doh area, and then the beans can be played in with the like larger part of the container. You hit the bottom, I'm going down with you. Let's take it slow Who cares where we gotta be You know you'll have a good time Wherever you're with me Let's take it So here's my little bin, and then in a second we'll get to see Aubrey's reaction and watch her play with it. I love it. Why do you try to make these? For you to play with. I like pumpkin. I hate floors, but I love these. I got, I love it. This is better than Frankles mm -hmm. and better than Jack. Do I go? Here you go. Wow. I made you a little surprise. Oh. This is better than Ghost and Halloween. Yay. Big, 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 big. So Aubrey is just so entertaining to watch whenever she's playing with sensory bins. I just love it. I loved watching her explore and have fun and play with the Play-Doh and you know she didn't seem to care about the beans that were sticking together or anything like that. She just had a blast. So anyways I thought I would just wrap up this video here. I'd like to thank you guys for taking the time to watch my videos and I really hope that you either found inspiration with any of the food that I shared today or even the sensory bin if you have been on the fence of making your own. I hope that this encourages you to you know give it a try and let your child just go at it and have fun. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and if you guys are new I would love it if you stuck around and subscribed and I will catch you in the next one.
it to the end of the video. If you didn't know already, every Monday and Friday, you can find motherhood and lifestyle content on this channel. And since us moms have to do it all, that may mean yummy recipes, easy DIYs, mom hacks, cleaning and organization, or just a combo of everything. Please know that you are loved and you are made for greatness, and I will catch you in the next one.